most beloved Ascension Pioneers. Today I'm coming to you with a video about something that so many have already talked about, the Law of Attraction, but something that I hardly find anything that is worth any real reference to it because, you know, everybody talks about it in so many ways and in their own way of understanding. And first of all, when we discuss such a matter, it is very important to again apply this principle that is eternal, that truth is different from the level of standpoint, you know, where you stand and where you view it and the level of your own vibration and awareness. And at each density, at each realm, of your own unique vibration, the truth of how to manifest will be different. And at the end, the principle and truth of oneness, which is what I'm usually referring and coming from, is um, there is no such need. All the need for such thing, you know, to manifest something, to desire something just drops away, just drops off. You know, I was talking to Yanni before making this video because he had to go somewhere and I said, okay, uh, what do you have to add to this contribution? Because everything what we do is you know, togetherness, <laughs> and uh, it's a shared message. And he said, you know, basically what all of the masters have always and continuously been saying, it's surrender yourself, continue to let go, know that everything in this divine creation we're all part of is in synchronization, all aspects of life. You know, the thing is, a lot of us who come here to teach about the basic principles of divine reunion, which is not just in our own intimate relationships as couples, as human to human interaction, but also interaction human to animal, human to mineral kingdom or plant kingdom or any other types of form of life is the basic principles of oneness, which apply when we fully understand that all life is interconnected. And all these principles, you know, the law of attraction is just one of the principles, one tiny part of the equation. It's not the whole thing. And so many presented like it's this entire thing that you become aware of to create your own reality when you awake. And this is it. And there it stops. And your awakening stops there. And new age is all there is. There, The new age approach to the law of attraction is all there is, which is so not the entire truth. So you can, we continue to awake, we continue to see more, and at the end, the more that we see, the more simple this truth is. So like Yanni said, like every master has always said, you know, have you ever saw a master speak about, let's manifest something, let's create our desires, let's, let's manifest something, you know, and have they ever been speaking, for instance, if you read the Tao Te Ching, have they ever been speaking about how to create your reality? They, all that they have been speaking about is the basic principle of oneness which is so simple in its truth. And like I said, the these truth of all, the source, when I was describing the infinity symbol nature is eternal. But what we experience within it, you know, in the outer regions of the sign of the symbol is our own fraction of creation and how we experience this. So the level of perception of the everything that is, and of course, applying here also to the basic law of attraction depends on where we stand and this, you know, at this point, wherever we are, it will seem different. But the point in the middle represents the truth, the eternal truth of it. So in this one point, all the principles of creation come together as one. So there is just no, no one thing as just a law of attraction here. When you understand this, but it's not a mental understanding, you see, when you really fully get this from your heart, from your spirit knowing, when you integrate your spirit knowing within you, you just understand that and you no longer feel the need to, you know, desire something because you know it's there already. Whatever you feel is felt because it's already there for you. It's already planned by you. You know, it's like the same thing as people who don't understand this is because they're not on the level of understanding this yet, which is fine. You know, where we are, are where we need to be. And you will understand a basic interaction, for instance, like they, they, let's take the example of a murderer and a victim. And many people don't see that. And they say, well, the free will of the murderer, you know, has overridden the free will of that victim. And that's not okay, you know. But when you really fully understand the source of everything of all that is, the grand creator of all or creatrix, <laughs> whatever you might call it, you understand that there is no such thing as a coincidence. There are no false plot lines. There are no mistakes, you know, in the divine plan of perfection, because there are multitudes of realities that you can experience, multiple possibilities. We have grander and more direct thing that, you know, for instance, let's say it, um, a focal uh, timeline, a very uh, probable timeline, which we create because a lot of the individuals decide to co-create that as well. So you have a probable timeline there. But at the same time, there are multiples of options. They're not, for instance, all holding the same record. They hold each something different. But whatever you will choose in that moment, there will be a counterpart to it. And there will be a direct, um, you know, choice 
that you can utilize in a certain aspect. There will always be a tool of utilization for you if you choose that option. So everything is intertwined. It is so simple that it's hard to describe this divine truth and divine principle with words uh, without putting it some human limitation to it. But in fact, it's really simple, you know, and um, before continuing on, and like I said, the victim and the murderer, it's everything is in divine correspondence. There's always an agreement there. And many people are there that still don't understand and they will say, but you don't see it, you know, we need to save something, we need to, you know, we still, we still see and feel sometimes that we have to save something that was a part of the divine anyway, because everything is. It's just all for learning and growth and self-remembrance of who we truly are and carrying out our journey. So without further ado, I would like to read you a paragraph about this before I start, you know, explaining a bit more about the levels of law of attraction and reading the question from one of my viewers. I would like to share with you this book, Earth Awakens from Selra Kelly. It's prophecy 2012 to 2030. And prophecy herein is not giving like, you know, the decided outcome. It says the, the three distinct realities that are outplaying, but how we choose through our own free will. You know, to understand divine principles, you also have to understand one of them, which is the principle of divine will, which um, also in, um, includes in this sector of the universe, the principle of free will. So the principle of free will is kind of like this subsequent part, you know, some tiny part within the grander whole. That's how you can see it. And it's the same way if you if you see the law of attraction. It's just this tiny, tiny thing, which is true on a certain part of your journey when you vibrate at a certain density. But then you also can expand further and then you see things differently. You see there, when people ask me questions, I cannot give them one answer because it really depends when you are in your journey. And some things might be true for you in that part of reality as what you choose to experience. And I cannot just say, well, for me, that no longer it resonates because I have transcended that and I never really vibrated with that or I never really chose that because it was not on my path you know but it might be on yours so that those are all things that are not really easy to describe and a lot of these books there's so few that I resonate with and Sal is probably one of three channel materials that I've read that I really resonate with that I get goosebumps I get chills of remembrance I really get inspired because Every well-written material is that which will cause you to really just be triggered into your own divine remembrance, not really, you know, um, make you follow it or make you blindly think this is it. But this book is written in such a beautiful way. It reads like, you know, like a beautiful piece of cake. And it's so easy to read and go through. And it's just amazing. And um, it's said here how we really influence everything with the free will. And when I was reading it with Yanni yesterday, we saw this tiny paragraph that included the law of attraction. So I bookmarked it and I said, okay, I really need to read this part. And um, I need to check which page is on. I think it's page five, page five and 10. And um, I wanted to read this also as a part of this video because I was asked about this. Um, but the book itself, I really recommend it because it's written in a way that I like to really um, describe things as well. And it ignites my own inner awareness. So remember that wherever you are in your journey, things will either resonate or not. Sometimes because they're not true at all. They're just false beliefs. Sometimes it's because they apply on a certain level of vibration where you're at, but they're not truth written in stone. They're not eternal principles. They're not eternal truths. They are true for that level or density or, but at the same time, they are included in the truth of one. They're just a sub particle of it. You see, it's kind of hard to really describe through the mental to someone who's not yet aware of this, these terms, because we have to become self-aware of them. Remember the saying that the great teacher never gives a student the answer. Well, I don't like to use the word teacher student, but maybe master and the apprentice both one at the same time you see they're both teaching one another because when you teach another you teach yourself as well and you grow and expand <clears throat> and I love this and I would never give people answers I just give detailed explanations of things how they might vary in different states of awareness and as always awareness is the key to everything <clears throat> so I wanted to really read about um, this thing which is the law of attraction and I hope I find it now because I've marked it where it is hmm I really didn't mark it well, I think. But I just want to say, um, let me see, 22, 22, fourth paragraph, where is this? I think this is something else because I marked a few things here. And um, I was just really, really disappointed because I can't find this now because I just wrote it down the page. 
but I think it's this. I found it. It's a tiny part that I'll read, and then I'll go on explaining about the law of attraction. I'll read the answer, the question that I'm giving the answer to. <clears throat> the quality of your consciousness determines your experience of reality. It is not entirely accurate to say that your thoughts create your reality since your reality can overlap and encompass many other realities that have little to do with your own creative process. You see, it really depends. If you broaden the definition of thought to include everything with the, within the mind of God, with the capital, including the thoughts of all other souls in creation, then we would say the idea that thoughts create reality would be a bit more accurate. But you are not there yet. You are currently vibrating at what this channel calls for density. At some point in the future of linear time, you will evolve your consciousness to the 12th density. And then you, like us, will be able to create entire universes. Today, that is not your concern. Even if we could, we are not going to offer you a shortcut to the 12th density. We're not going to raise millions of years of soul experience by bestowing upon you the full manifestation of your potential as creator gods before you are even slightly qualified. Yet, paradoxically, we will also remind you that you are already creator gods yourselves with all the potential to become aware of your 12 selves right now. Our concern at the moment is to give you a roadmap to help you navigate your way through the multitude of earth changes. We're here to help you understand the mechanics and dynamics of the transformation of your species. That is just this tiny, tiny part and just the part that includes also in words a bit about the law of attraction. Um, and now I would like to just say that you see it is so relative and so many things are relative, especially the law, the principle of free will is very hard understood, especially by those who are still growing in this process of trying to remember this, trying to remember how they were created as one with all the rest of us, with all of us. So the question was this, I would like to ask you a question. Um, it has to do with the law of attraction about whatever you think about materializes into your reality. I would like to know whether you feel it's truth, and if you think it is, I'm confused because are we not all the same being, just in different bodies? We are all um, equal, but we're not all the same being. We're all one being. We're all part of the one, but we're not all the same being. We're unique, individualized I am presences. So how, for instance, does the law work if there is a conflicting desires? There are never conflicting desires. This is just a perception of our mind. We see it as such because we have... Although we have different learning lessons, all is intertwined, you see. And it takes, like I said, understanding of the level of oneness to understand this. There's never conflicting desires, even if there, there appear to be in this realm of third density or even fourth density. We're still not complete understanding of this. It's just a perception and it's just our truth at the moment. But we, we continue to grow, you see. For example, let's say there is a competition to win a car. I'm visualizing winning the car, but you are also. Which person wins? Well, whatever person wins, when you see the truth within the level of oneness, is, it's really a petty manner. It's really not something that a fourth or fifth level dimensional, not dimensional, but density being would consider, you know, about, would think about. You know, I would never think about winning a car or winning something material because my level is thinking fifth dimensional consciousness and beyond. And so I'm not focused on this and I'm focused on serving and, you know, being aligned with everything that is and being a part of the experience of one, although experiencing through my own individual self. So your perspective, your perspective of what you wish to desire really changes. This is just one example that is very trivial. It's a nice example. But again, even if it seems like a conflicting desire, there is never such a thing because each participant has its own agenda, has its own intention. But that, which is for the highest good, when you look at it from the level of oneness, will come to manifest. So, for instance, if one of those souls needs to experience how it is to win money and not really, you know, gain it on your own, and then a lot of the people quickly lose it if they win it in such a way. That's just one trivial example. But if that person really needs that growth for their highest experience, they will win the car, for instance, you see. So we're both doing same visualization with the same amount of belief that we will win. I hope this makes sense to you. Well, basically, it's just this visualization thing. Again, it's very trivial, and I will explain this while I read um, a further question on, and I will explain why. More importantly, and the main reason I have emailed you is that this idea that whatever we think about materializes is causing me quite a lot of distress because someone who has passed away, I have been overly worrying about other loved ones dying also. Well, see, that's the thing. Why would we ever worry about someone dying? Because they choose. Everything is a choice. Everything is perfect as it is. Once you understand 
from within, not mentally. The oneness principle, you see that everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. Even if it's within the laws um, of choice of free will, still the divine has its plan because the free will is only one segment within the grander divine will of all unfolding. You see the divine master plan. So I know that nobody wants to lose what they love, but because no one loses anything, remember this. I seem to worry about it so much now. My mind gets carried away and I seem to visualize what it would be like, how, how it would feel and other things that according to popular belief would encourage this to happen. Could somebody lose their life just from my worrying about it? No, because that is their own conscious choice. Remember, we're only responsible for our own actions, words, deeds. Responsibility lies just for us. You can, you can, you know what, we're really not responsible for others and we cannot help or save them, but we can just hold the space. For instance, if someone has healing work to do and you really see it and they don't see it yet, you can only remain in your awareness and help them in a way that they can better come into their awareness by you projecting the awareness energy into them. You're not projecting it onto them. You're just rippling out of your own source vortex. You see, it's not so trivial like many see it. It's just because the new age propaganda has been so immense that people think it's like law of attraction, um, you know, just souls going to heaven, um, and that's how it is. So why do people still worry then? You know, do you think new age principles and how they're explained in a very superficial manner, nothing goes to depth. You think you still, you know, if you, if you try to solve the problem at the very most superficial layer, where we really get to the root. If people are still sad and depressed, are they willing to their awareness? Well, they're not, because they're still seeking at the place where there is no answer. Of course, if you still seek there, it can still bring you to a place where you already have these answers within you through your own source self, because everything what we experience on our journey is a part of that journey. Even if it might be an airy-fairy new age, or like Sal mentions here at the beginning, it's a part of your journey, and it might direct you towards something new at a certain later stage or a very parallel stage in your development of spirit, you know, through this experience. But still, you see that there is no such thing. There is no such thing as these superficial explanations when, when you see that all these answers about this are within you because you and your DNA, you carry the same principles of creation, the same encodings as everyone else. And when you start this remembrance, when you start going and embarking upon a journey of self-remembrance, you will get this answer to yourself. So um, this makes me so confused and I really would like your opinion. Um, my inner, oh, this is something else, this question. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Uh, my inner voice says this can't be, you know, by causing someone else to die because you think it it's true the inner voice is right so i really acknowledge this and i encourage everyone to listen to your inner voice because it's always right but from reading books from authors such as esther and jerry hicks and also Rhonda burn burn which is about the secret very superficial material i mean it's not wrong it's just written on the levels that are dealing with things just on a superficial side they don't go to the depth of the spiritual nature of all things in creation um so reading from these books, it should be that anything I visualize strongly enough should happen in my world. This makes me confused and I really would like your opinion. Well, let's be brought to the basic fact. If some material doesn't empower you, doesn't make you feel self-empowered and makes you feel confused, then you know it's not something that resonates with your own heart truth. If something like this book does it for me, it brings you closer to that own inner remembrance, which you already know. For me, it's like... I know this. It just causes you to resurface, you know, that knowledge, that inner knowing resurface. So if you read certain materials that don't do it for you in that way, then you know they're not empowering you. If they leave you confused, and like I've said many times, if it's not divine guidance, it will keep you in this mode of being thirsty for more, which is great. You know, they will, you will read something and you'll say, wow, this is not the entire truth. I don't fully resonate with it. And then you'll, I don't know, maybe write to me, maybe you'll discover something else. You'll do the research on the internet. You'll pick another book in the library. I don't know. Well, you just start dreaming about and visualizing something and meditating. You'll get your own answers. It doesn't matter. We all get to these things in our own way. But the process of this triggering is what counts. So I would like to explain this. The level of why so many people don't resonate anymore with these um, secret and visualize everything and will become, if you really just think it strongly enough, why they don't feel true to so many? Because so many has, have transcended this level of awareness. This is written very much in the in the realm of third density when we really have to really think and it's really dense and you have to want something and there's desire and then think you need something. 
in the level of higher density, you don't need anything. You just surrender for everything to happen naturally. You trust that you already have all the codes written within you, what you need, and your spirit knows what you need. And you continue to allow your spirit to guide you towards what you need. You no longer allow your human self to intervene, interfere, and control everything. So in every layer, every density that you vibrate in, there's a different set of principles that apply to words, how you live, how you breathe, how you, for instance, how animals procreate, how we procreate, you know, in the higher densities, this doesn't apply anymore. Um, so the law of attraction is, you know, just one principle that is true for a certain level of density. And it's very mental. You visualize things. So what you do is you use your brain capacity. And it's very small in this matter, you see. But in the fifth dimensional, in the, our higher awareness, you no longer think of manifesting things. You are just tuning into the oneness alone or in a group. It doesn't matter because your I am presence is already connected to the all, the I am presence of all. For instance, the group oversoul of the humanity, you know, here on earth or wider. So you, you tune into that. And you just tap into that, you melt into oneness, and you say all that is for the greater good is unfolding. And there is no such thing as a future outline or, you know, manifesting from worrying about from the past and then carrying that forward. Because the past in the third level density can really, you know, influence what you will keep experiencing because that is all you think you know and you stick with it. And so that is all you continue to experience, you see? So in the higher densities, you just trust. There's just enfoldment there's just keep continuous growth and ongoing things you don't no longer i mean for instance let me give you our example with me and yanni we really desire but it's not a desire it's like this inner knowing that is our path it's very different you see there's a subtle difference but it's a huge difference when you think of it we know where we are set to live we don't know when we don't know when because when is not for us to know because time is so linear and it's not our experience of spirit which is eternal knowing so we feel where we're supposed to live. We know this is already our unfolding in the future if we reference it in linear time thinking. Because like I said, there you can look at things from the linear time frame or from the non-linear and eternal point of view. So from there on, we just feel this is already our truth. And this feelingness, the more that we feel it, just keeps bringing that and materializing it into this plane. So we are co-creating it. So we basically, in the higher densities, we co-create with our knowingness. Our inner knowingness creates through the heart. With the heart principle in the lower realms in the third density what we usually experience is karmic outplaying so you for instance you will want a car because you will want an experience of how it is to win something and to lose it because for instance you you might want to learn the lesson of loss or material gain and how it is or whatever there's numerous lessons souls wish to, to grow through so you you choose that and there's a certain karmic outbalancing playing out for instance murder and the victim they choose this because the, the ties here are already karmic. So this was the nature of third density and what we manifest. So in third density, we manifest basically through karma and we grow through karma. In the higher, maybe lower fourth plane, yeah, basically lower fourth plane for density, we really manifest through the mental. We This is the mental level. And we usually think of things and we think that the mind creates, but then when we already transcend that, we see that is also not true for us anymore on that level because we have transcended it. And in the higher level, there's just the heart that manifests, you see? And on level even higher is even, again, a different experience. So how I do it is, for instance, let me give you a great example from us sitting down on a new moon and saying we'll, we'll write our intentions down. There's a very subtle and, again, huge difference between writing your intentions just to grounding and pulling it from your inner knowing is because you already know this is your truth and bringing it through you. Again, only being responsible for your own reality. Not by I'm, I'm I'm not even writing about oh I I'm 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 manifesting others to stay alive to stay alive you can't and basically you don't have a saying in that anyway. In fact, if that was not you know your experience you know to have this co cooperation through um, mutual correspondence you know because we're all intrinsically connected together and intimately. And unless that was your experience, then you really don't have any say in that. So you can write it as much as you want, but you won't make it happen. You know, for instance, I if I would have an annoying neighbor and I would keep saying, oh, gosh, I wish that person to die or I wish them to move somewhere else because they're so annoying. I don't have a saying in that because it's not coming from my heart anyway, if I'm thinking this way, right? So in the level of higher density, we just feel and we trust and we... We flow with all of life forms, even if they're of lower nature than we already vibrate at. 
we just cherish them, we respect them, we don't have to coexist and co-create with them. We might really feel that it's time for us to move somewhere else or for us to create something different for us. But we don't control others and we know we can't. They have their own soul choices and they might continue to live through this change or they might continue not to. It doesn't matter, you see? In the level of higher awareness, all that matters for you is to trust your source of all and your inner I am presence and to just enjoy life because you will allow, you allow life to teach you to guide you to show you what is right for you and you will feel it so you cannot influence someone else's path this way and let's say I've sat down with my intentions and I'm writing them down and when it's my inner knowingness I'm just surrendering I'm just automatically writing down you know you know in this um, new moon cycle I'm seeing this to happen and I'm this and and then you say only this or something greater beloved creator of all or beloved I am you know you say beloved I am beloved I am beloved I am it's just your inner God self and that's it and then you just close it off and continue you don't even think about it because you know if there was a part of your mind being involved there it doesn't matter because we're already in fold how it's supposed to in the, in, you know things all intertwine as one so in the other scenario, you would write it down and you were like, I want it like this, I want it like that, I want it like that. That's the ego. So if you're meant to manifest it that way for the learning experience, it will happen. So basically, we all come to the same conclusion through all these different examples. What will happen will happen, whether we create it or not, through thoughts, through whatever kind of way form we use it, we will create it for the highest good within the divine will of all, even when there's free will included. What will happen will happen because it has to happen. It's kind of hard. Like we were talking with Yanni and he said, ooh, ouch, that's a very, that's a very kind of controversial, controversial topic to speak about. I wouldn't go into it. And I said, well, I have to because this is our purpose. And he said, yeah, but, you know, we understand it to us. This is natural to some of the individuals. It might be so controversial. And I said, it doesn't matter because those who are meant to understand it will. And we both agreed on that. So the thing is, there's a difference, you see. When we say, let's visualize our intentions for the new moon, it can either be you visualizing it because it's coming from your inner knowingness that this is already happening and it's coming from the heart and you just ground it. Writing is just a source for grounding things, you know, grounding spirit into matter. Because for us, writing is our channel. You know, now Nayani said I'm doing automatic writing as well and he's writing the same way I do. And in the other example, which I gave was more like, you know, controlling things. These are not two same examples. So when you really are vibrating at the highest octaves, you won't feel any need for the law of attraction. You will just continue to surrender. And when you really are master of all, master of oneness, master of life, master of creation, you will just be. You will just be. You will trust. Whatever comes, accept it. Whatever comes, embrace it. Whatever comes, love it. Love yourself. Love others. But don't continue to control them. And don't, you know, fear that you're losing or that you're, I don't know. We just watched a movie called Star Wars um, Part 3 yesterday. And this was a movie where um, Anakin turned into a Dark Vader. So he turned to the dark side, basically, so to say. And what happened is what pushed him there as his final push was the fear of loss of his beloved one, you know, Padme. So because of that, because he thought if he's going to come to the dark side, he's going to have all the special forces and powers that, you know, the Jedi um, mastership does not include. And there were other triggers. Because of that, he went to fear mode and he went to, I want power, I want control, I want dominion. And that turned him over to the dark side. That is a very beautiful message of the movie. And we all need to continue to learn from that, to remember that, you know, Yoda says to him that this is what really prevents us. The fear of loss prevents us from really being who we are. So it was just a really amazing experience. The whole movie wasn't something really great. But the message is, as it's given through so many masters and uh, sources of light and beautiful pioneering spirits already out there everywhere. So remember, wherever you are at the level of your density, it is up for you to see where you vibrate at, you know, feel yourself and just see what kind of level of attraction applies here? So how you basically attract. The third density, like I said, usually karma attract. You attract karmic relationships. You don't attract because you visualize. Because if you're still bound to karmic wheel, you will, you will go through it. You can't escape your destiny, you see? Because you have created it anyway for your own growth and experience on this evolution path of souls. And the fourth level is usually um, developing your mind and see how mind influences things, how it shapes them, you know, how you co-create this reality. But again, the higher octaves above the fifth and the fifth 
are always about conscious co-creation within oneness principles of the heart. You already feel what is there. You feel what is already there. And that is all that matters. So you see, the truth is different from where you see it, but the truth of one remains one. So remember, we're not the same being. We are one supreme being. We're part of it, but we're individualized aspects of it. And wherever we are, we will experience things differently. In different principles, the tinier parts of the whole general principles will apply as to what we wish and desire to experience because we have decided so. So it's hard to describe how it feels and this feeling of you understand the interdynamics of everything. You understand the outplaying. There's no more need to heal the world. And because you see the world is perfect already because it's just how it is. You know, you cannot say that creation is something that operates within the principles that are false or, you know, not working well. That's just simply not true. Love yourself and love your creator because you're one. I'll talk to you soon and so much love to all. Bye.